George Lucas made it abundantly clear when talking to Samuel L. Jackson that there were only three colors of lightsaber, red, blue, green. Good guys are green and blue, bad guys are red. That's just the way it works. So knowing this, understandably, Star Wars fans absolutely lost their mind when The Mandalorian introduced one of the most novel types of lightsaber into live action canon. And that, of course, was the Darksaber. Welcome back to The Order, where we talk about all things awesome and collectible. Today's dish of choice is the Darksaber from Galaxy's Edge. We're going to be taking a look at some of the pros and cons for this replica slash toy, and hopefully helping you make your mind up as to whether or not this is a particular hilt that you want to add to your collection. If you enjoy the video, it would be a massive help if you could drop me a like and subscribe. Help a veteran get a warm meal. Let's get in. Taking a look at the blade itself, weirdly, it's somehow beautiful while at the same time having absolutely nothing to look at. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's not like the Mace Windu lightsaber where you've got gold, silvers, you know, lots of little bits of detail. The Disney iteration of this lightsaber is, is just a black hilt. The handle has a bit of a kind of a grip texture to it. It's not rubber, uh, I don't think, and it's not plastic. It's almost like they've just got a rougher metal here. It's got four LEDs at the top or four lights at the top which I'm assuming will light up when we put a blade in here. It's a really narrow design though and it feels very comfortable in the hands. As far as the Galaxy's Edge lightsabers go, this is probably the most accurate that they've got in terms of dimensions. It's got a brilliant weight to it. I will, I'll bust out my scales later but um, I'll give you an idea of the weight on this but it's it's awesome. It, feel, it feels heavy, it feels premium push button design <laughs> why aren't they doing this on every single saber it's madness you can do it disney you can do it it's absolute insanity that they'd have like that's fine it's that's one of the best push buttons that i've seen them do why why didn't they do this with the ahsoka ones the ahsoka push buttons horrible push button on the mandalorian dark saber lovely push button on the ahsoka Ooh, that's horrible and it sticks so the saber itself is is stunning, it really is, and it's an awesome display piece. So I'll run you through what you get with the box. It comes in a protective sleeve, which is okay, that's by the by. The actual cardboard box itself tries to retain some of the design from the plastic crates. In my view, the plastic crates are still superior, but the plastic crates come with hilts only. With this, you get a display stand, which if you're not interested in spending loads of money on the Disney version, you know, the, the electronic one they've just released, that sounds absolutely fine, you know, it, it does, a, does a good enough job. It's kind of plexiglass or plastic, which is, feels a bit flimsy, so I'm, I'm a bit wary of it, but it does, an, it does an okay job. You get the hilt itself, but you then also get the blade. And given that this is a very unique lightsaber, the blade is absolutely necessary for inclusion. All of the other lightsabers that you get have standard uh, Doc Ondar lightsaber blades, so if one of them breaks, you can replace it. With this, it is unique. The blade itself looks pretty good, it feels sturdy, the blade's got some weight to it. Um, bit of a rattle so you can hear the LEDs popping around in there, but it looks good. The box is okay, it's, it looks, it's magnetized, it's premium, fancy cardboard is what it is, but anyway. The Allen key is needed to get access to the battery, and that's because it's sort of spring-loaded. So you unscrew the cover tech wheel a little bit and the end pops off and then it gives you access to the power core like you normally would have other Disney Sabres. Because the shape of this hilt is so unique, they've had to be quite inventive about the way they do different things. So the blade cap that you normally get, or the blade plug that you normally get with a Galaxy's Edge hilt has its own design here. And that's a lovely bit of detail here. It looks it looks like, like it's the emitter. You know, that's a really, really nice bit of detail that they didn't have to do. They could have just slapped black plastic on there like they do with the other blade plugs. And people would probably have thought, that's okay. That's great. In its pure hilt form, I have no criticisms. And I think it looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. I told you I was going to show you how heavy this is. And that's what we're going to do. Forgive me for the scales. I'm British. We're still stuck in the dark ages. Just over half a kilogram worth of lightsaber. The Kenobi Padawan is just under of the Vader lightsaber. So the Vader is actually heavier. I figured the thing that you really want to know is what's the electronics like. So, get to that, take our blade plug out, and be more nimble fingered than me, you don't need to drop this. A typical Galaxy's Edge lightsaber is twist and lock. This, simply push, and it's in. 
Now, ordinarily you'd twist and unlock it to get the blade out on a Galaxy's Edge Saber. With this, Disney have hidden a little button here. You depress that without pushing the button on the back. Press that and you pull it out. I will show you in the dark because it's not fair to do it in the daylight, but Hmm. Okay, so only two of those LEDs light up, not all four. That's a bit of a shame. Is that just mine, or is that is that is that a fault, or is that how these are with everybody else's? Let me know in the comments. But so the blade lights first, and then those light again. That's kind of a weird order in terms of the blade itself. It's actually you know, like I said, in the daylight. You can still tell it's on, weirdly not at the tip. There's no LEDs up here at the tip, so you can see that's actually a point where you can see the LEDs there. The rest of them are hidden by the black strip, so it actually doesn't look too bad. So it is picking up movement, you can see just by me twisting this. In terms of brightness, again, I've got the windows open, I've got pure daylight here. That looks okay. It's a real shame about the tip. Like, that's that's really noticeable in the daylight. I wonder if that's going to be any different in the dark. If that's still noticeably dark in the when I have the lights off. That feels like a massive blunder. Like a real... Why, why wouldn't you just carry on... Because you could just keep making this black strip thinner and keep the LEDs behind it. But why wouldn't you go right to the edge? Why, Disney? Why? You were so close to such a near-perfect review! Again, why wouldn't you have all four of these lighting up? If that is mine and mine looks faulty, let me know. The sound on it though, the, the, so the sounds are pretty good. The volume's pretty good, no complaints there. The motion control, it's definitely picking stuff up. Not entirely convinced that it's picking stuff up in the way that the Sabre would do during the series. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that, especially so the price I got this wasn't that far off what I had seen the price for the Hasbro Rubbish Toys was. Um, so to say that I got it for not that far off that really, pretty happy. Biggest recommendation there would be look out for Disney Disney sales. Shop Disney I got this from. So is this a lightsaber that I'd recommend adding to your collection from Disney? To be honest, yeah. And I didn't think I'd say that. I thought I was going to be getting this and giving it a massive, this is no good. There are some issues with the blades and I have my reservations still about whether or not the sounds would, would bang on. But overall, definitely worth having. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. See you on the flip side.